But over the last decade, something remarkable has happened. The scientific community has come together and begun to figure out how to do this much more efficiently. First, it was ways to skim the genome and get much of the information out pretty cheaply. And then, just in the past three, four years or so, the ability to read out the entire genome much, much more cheaply. And when I say much more cheaply, what I mean is this. $3 billion now costs $3,000. It's a one million-fold improvement over the course of roughly a decade. I don't know how many million-fold improvements we've seen. Think about if housing prices fell by a factor of a million over the course of a decade, you know, not due to market crashes, because somehow we could build houses stunningly more efficiently. Or if transcontinental travel was a million times cheaper because of technological advances. Well, that's what we're living through right now, is really in the past several years, it's now a million times cheaper to sequence DNA than when we did it in the Human Genome Project. And what that means is amazing things are starting to happen. Let me tell you what I mean by amazing things. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a devastating disease. It affects about 1% of the population, and it onsets at the worst possible time in early adulthood with devastating consequences. What we knew about the genetic factors that contribute to schizophrenia just five years ago was nothing. Zero genes. Groups got together. I'm proud this group happens to have been a group at the Broad Institute, which I direct. And they began looking at large collections of patients. They looked at 10,000 people, 5,000 with schizophrenia, 5,000 without and began to do this genome skimming, the light version of it first. And they did this, and they got to the end of it, and they found nothing. This worried them a great deal. In fact, the National Institute of Mental Health said, we shouldn't be doing any more of this. You know, this, is, this doesn't look like it's working. But when they looked at the data, they said, yeah, nothing's significant technically. But when you look at the data, there are a lot of things that are close to significant. Let's press on. And thanks to philanthropy, they pressed on. And they looked at 20,000 people, and they found five genes. And then they took it to 40,000 and 80,000. And now, as of last month, there are 90 genes that have been identified as playing roles in schizophrenia, and they start to make sense. Four of them are all four of the subunits of a particular thing called a calcium channel. And you don't need to be a biologist to say that means something. That says that calcium channel must play some important role. And a bunch more of these genes are involved in something called postsynaptic densities, things that are at synapses of, of nerves. And if you look at the picture and you squint, you can begin to get the idea that this is going to be a disease about the pruning of neurons at a certain stage of development. And it's going to take some more years to get it. They've only done the skimming part, actually. The sequencing part has begun for a few thousand, and it's confirming it. But for the first time, we can begin to see causes of schizophrenia. But it's not just schizophrenia. Type 2 diabetes, adult diabetes. We're beginning to see the genetics of that falling out. Early heart attack. Well, we know that high lipids are bad for you, but some people die of early heart attacks, and they don't have high lipids. What's going on? Well, again, people have begun to collect large samples and begun to do the skimming, not yet quite the sequencing, and are finding the genes that begin to explain why people die of early heart attacks. Inflammatory bowel disease, a disease about which we knew nothing not so long ago. There's now more than 140 genes arranged into 11 pathways, and it begins to start making some sense. Now, I don't want to overstate that we understand all of it. It's that for the first time, we're beginning to glimpse what the architecture is of these diseases and the pathways in which they fall. Now, in no disease are the implications more important than for cancer. 